passing the USMLE step exams are a core component of becoming a licensed physician here in the United States. In this video series, I will detail my resources, strategies, and general advice for all three USMLE exams. Step three is the final exam to earn a license to practice independently without supervision. What sets USMLE Step 3 apart is that it spans two days and has case simulations. As of now, the cutoff for passing the exam is 198. The average score is about 227 with 15 points of standard deviation. First, let's cover the logistics of scheduling the exam. To even sign up for Step 3, an applicant must have passed both USMLE Step 1 and Step 2 CK and have graduated their medical school and earned their medical degree. The Step 3 score is not required for residency, application, interview, or ranking process since most medical students in the United States apply to residency prior to their medical school graduation. However, if an applicant has already graduated medical school and have low scores in Step 1 and or Step 2 CK, it may be advantageous to take and pass Step 3 prior to residency application. In that case, the program director does not have to worry about the applicant taking and passing Step 3 during their residency. Moreover, a good Step 3 score may even alleviate the program director's concern for the applicant taking and passing their respective specialty board exam. Step 3 may also be required to obtain an H-1B visa. Now, these advantages must be balanced with adequately preparing for and passing the exam, as failing the exam prior to residency application will have far worse consequences. The deadline for taking Step 3 varies by the specialty and the individual residency program. Personally, I would recommend taking Step 3 as soon as possible after graduating medical school to free up the rest of your PGY-1 year. Residency is busy and intern year has a steep learning curve. Doing URL questions during your lighter or elective blocks is definitely not a pleasant experience when you can be resting and recouping. If you are in a subspecialty residency, it can be annoying to restudy the nitty gritty details of general medicine that you thought you left behind in medical school. Contrary to the popular belief, you do not need the knowledge from intern year to pass or even ace the step three exam. When scheduling, I recommend taking day one and day two of the exam either back to back or with one day in between to minimize the anxiety hanging over your head. This is because UWorld simultaneously prepares you for the multiple choice content of day one and day two together. Furthermore, leaving the case simulation preparation until after day one is not generally advisable and will only add to your anxiety. More on this later. Now, let's cover the breakdown of the exam. Day one is just like any other step exam, consisting entirely of 232 multiple choice questions divided into six blocks of either 38 or 39 questions. Biostatistics is an extremely important component of day one. About five to 10 questions will be biostatistics or pharmaceutical drug advertisements and scientific abstracts. Please check out my biostatistics playlist here on YouTube where I comprehensively cover almost all epidemiology and biostatistics concepts in details on the USMLE syllabus. Now, there will also be a few step one style, basic science, pathophysiology, and drug mechanism questions. Perusing through Reddit, histology, genetics, and basic immunology questions have also shown up. On test day, I strongly recommend leaving the biostatistics and drug ad questions towards the end as they often require calculations. Day two has 180 multiple choice questions divided into six blocks of 30 questions and 13 computer-based case simulations or CCS. Fortunately, the multiple choice questions contain no biostatistics and focus on primary care, disease prognosis and risk factors, and preventative medicine. 
for the case simulations, each is allotted 10 to 20 minutes maximum. The cases end early when you essentially arrive at the diagnosis and do what you are supposed to do. Otherwise, the cases may drag on. I personally use the INCA protocol to initially approach all of my cases. Generally speaking, unless the procedure was invasive, such as a colonoscopy, I erred on the side of ordering it. If you arrive at the diagnosis early, the case ends and the test gives you two minutes to make any final order. I made it a habit to order counseling and vaccinations for all of my patients regardless of the setting. Links to some helpful resources for the CCS are in the description below. Lastly, let's cover resources and studying advice. Most residents study a few weeks to a month in their lighter all elective blocks to prepare for step three. UWorld remains the gold standard and the best learning tool to prepare for the multiple choice questions. Finishing UWorld is not necessary to pass the exam. My personal style of doing UWorld is topic-based questions on untimed and tutor mode to focus on learning the concepts. I made my own flashcards from the UWorld content and reviewed them about a week prior to the exam. If you feel that you may not finish the QBank before the test, doing timed random blocks may be advisable. The two UWorld simulated exams or UWorld Sim 1 and 2 are more than enough to assess your readiness for the actual exam and find weak areas, although they may underpredict your actual score. Here are a few other resources for the multiple choice questions to keep in mind depending on your studying style. For biostatistics, my videos and slides and the UWorld questions are all you need. Randy Neal's YouTube videos are also very popular. I bought the $25 UWorld Biostat mini course and thought that it was too bare bones and did not delve deep enough into many important topics. Your first aid step one book is still the best resource for drug mechanism, immunology, and other basic science questions you will see on day one. One week to a few days before day one of the exam, I recommend at least going through the microbiology and the antimicrobial section. If you have more time, try to cover the mechanism of other drugs, biostatistics, immunology, and the ethics section of the book. Along a similar vein, Sketchy Micro and Sketchy Farm are still extremely useful resources to review bugs and drugs. If you are an Anki user, Dorian Step 3 is the most popular deck and has around 2800 cards. Boards and Beyond videos were okay, but I did not think that they added significantly to my preparation. If you want a companion book, Master the Boards has been popular on Reddit and SDN, although I have personally never used it. Other QBanks such as Kaplan or Amboss are generally not necessary. For the CCS cases, I used both UWorld CCS and CCScases.com and I would strongly recommend CCScases.com because you get feedback on your diagnostic steps and the orders you missed. A few of those cases were even identical to the cases that I saw on day two of the actual test. As you go through the practice cases, I recommend making notes of must not miss orders for each disease, patient population such as obstetrics or children, and each organ system. For instance, every cardiac, pulmonary, or abdominal complaint gets an EKG and every woman of childbearing age gets a pregnancy test. I would recommend doing at least 75% of the cases from ccscases.com and incorporate practicing your cases throughout the duration of your preparation rather than cramming them in a week prior to the exam. When you use ccscases.com, set up a random time lag to simulate technical issues you may face on test day. Crush CCS Cases book has been recommended by some and I believe it is a decent supplementary book to get your feet wet prior to attempting CCS cases. However, I still believe that your biggest educational value will come from doing 
as many case simulations from ccscases.com as you can. Well, that's it for today's video. I hope you found my tips helpful. Best of luck on your preparation and on the actual test day. The feeling that you are done with USMLE forever after day two is unlike any other. As always, stay well and see you next time.